welcome back to Soccer with a Kick. We have a new song. Got to get through this. It got me through a lot of preseason training. Uh, thanks, Grant, the producer, for being back. And Alan, thank you so much for coming in. How are you? Good to be back. How are you doing? I'm doing really well, good, especially good. with that new music. I was I was basically up standing dancing. I loved it. So <laughs> it was great. Did you have a good weekend? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. You know, the usual average boring weekend, but it's restful, so that was good. Welcome to my life. Yeah, but no, it is, it is nice to get the rest and uh, you get to watch a lot of sports. Uh, obviously, our whole theme is soccer, but we get to watch other sports as well, which is nice. Um, if you have questions for me and Alan, uh, you can contact us at at Craig underscore Malice and then at Alan Willie 9 I believe. Correct, Alan? Correct, that's it, yeah. That one. And if you like the song, give us a thumbs up, let us know. If you didn't like the song, then let us know and we'll change it. So a thing we kind of want to do is if you're listening and you've got an idea for a song, it could be your favorite song, it could be your least favorite song, can Let we, us know what it is. Can we tweet you? If, yep. if it's What was your Twitter handle again? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Alan might do it right now as we're sitting here. You can just tell me, mate, right straight to my face. That's the way I like it. Um, but if you, do, uh, if you do do that, if you do have an idea for us, let us know. And every week we'll, we'll, we'll change it. We have an, a brilliant producer. Grant, how was your weekend? It was good. Thank you. It was uh, a lot of fun. I went to the uh, Rhyme Sayers concert on Friday and... Went out to the wild game on Saturday and Sunday. I was devastated by my Vikings, which is the norm. But, uh, yeah, it was a good weekend for me. I went to that concert, too. It was a good one. It was a long one. Um, were you the guy who ran on stage streaking? <laughs> no, no, I was not, thank God. <laughs> was it Alan, was it you? No, I was at home. I just bringing up the weekend and the Vikings and everything, I guess I had a poor weekend because Sunderland got beat first thing in the morning. The Vikings got hammered in the afternoon. Uh, Newcastle won, which is even worse. Yeah. Wait, we did? The, 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 the Wild got beat on, on Monday. So it was just a horrible weekend for my sports teams. I couldn't agree more, Alan. You and I both here. It was just terrible. Oh. But yeah, the weekends are good, but it's also good to be back. Um, Tuesday, Tuesdays are great for us. It's, I get to, like I said, hang out with my friend Alan and we get to speak. And um, as you'll see with his show and how it's gone, we've have so many stories between us and um, the knowledge and we just I, it's I'm in awe of just uh, speaking to him and talking about you know what we love which is football we'll get into music we'll get into restaurants might even get into what Alan does on a date night um, uh, with the wife or without the wife uh, but we'll uh, we'll figure that out but MLS Cup was this weekend we're in America MLS is very good. I watch a lot of it based on my brother, based on the level um, that I played at. I do enjoy it. I do know the quality. And it was Portland 2. Uh, but, sorry, Portland uh, won the MLS Cup. Um, I'm not against Columbus. It was 2-1. Um, goalkeeper mistakes. That's all it was. And I think you said you saw the first goal. For yeah, Portland, yeah, uh, like I say, I intended to watch it. I, I left the the Vikings game early when they've been down thirty five to zero. There was no chance of them coming back. They never looked like it was going to come back. So I headed out to the Sprint store to get my new phone, thinking I'd be back in an hour. And then two and a half hours later, I come back and there's like six minutes left in the game. So that that's all I saw late late in the game. But I did see the goal, the the first goal. I think it was when the goalkeeper, with the ball was passed back to him, and then he turned it towards his own goal. And the forward ran in there and just threw his body in there. And it kind of reminds me when I was played when, when goalkeepers, goal pe goalkeepers when I played weren't very good with the feet. They're much better these days. But back when I played, most goalkeepers weren't very good with their feet. So you, you'd give them a flyby just to to see how how good they were with their feet. When I say flyby, I mean you wouldn't really go full, full you know full in there just to try and block it. You just just get close enough to think well. You know, if I take another step or so early on, I can make make that move and get that ball in front of him. I never did block into the goal, but I did block him from clearing it out, and, and might have gone to a couple of our players, and we did score goals from it. But I used to like to give him a few flybys to see how close I could get, and then when it was on, and if the ball bobbled a little bit, you were just flying in there, and you know, hopefully they make mistakes. It was a bad goal conceding after I don't know maybe twenty five, thirty seconds. 
Yeah, it's a it's a bad time to give up a goal like that any time. But when it's a first within the first minute of the game, it just everyone's just deflated, especially the home team. Safety first, yeah, they were the whole team. Safety first as well, and obviously the the goalkeeper took a touch towards his own goal, which the first thing you should be taught is you always take it away from the goal. It's even worse that the player that played the ball back to the goalkeeper that he played it in between the two posts. So the goalkeeper had to make that decision. You always play the ball outside, and my good friend. Um, Stan Anderson, who was my coach at UWM, he runs Camp Shutout, which is the biggest goalkeeping camp in the world. Stan, we love you. You're amazing. Um, he, I'm sure he was horrified at the goalkeeping that happened this past weekend. That being said, though, we spoke a little bit before we came in, and it was Scotland against England in goalkeepers. And when I was when I was young in Scotland. Uh, actually, we'll start a little bit different. In the US, I coach full-time youth soccer. When I shout, we need a goalkeeper, or who anyone want to jump in goal? Every single player on the team at the youth level, I'm talking about, you know, like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12-year-olds, everyone raises his hand and wants to jump in. When I grew up in Scotland, as soon as the manager, the head coach, it, that age, same age said, who wants to play in goal? That's when you ran to the side of the field and would maybe relieve yourself and uh, <laughs> go to the bathroom and kind of waste some time. Nobody wanted to play. And I played once and someone passed the ball back to me and I let it go through my legs into the goal. Manager goes, Miles, you're shocking. You're never playing again. I was elated. You said it was a little bit different when you grew up in England. When I grew up, you know, I used to, I, in fact, I started off playing as a goalkeeper when I first went to the, the junior school, um, seven, eight years old. I was a goalkeeper for the first couple of years, and then I changed to come out to be an outfield, and then I was scoring all these goals, so the, 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 the coach at the time just decided to keep me playing out as a forward. But um, I did play in goal for Middlesbrough when I was at Middlesbrough um, for half a game against Sunderland. We played them in the reserves, and we were leading, uh, I think it was 2 or 3 nothing. I'd scored a couple of goals. The goalkeeper came in at half time and said he'd hurt his back. He couldn't continue. But back then, there was only one substitute. You had the 11 players plus the one substitute. And the substitute that day wasn't the goalkeeper. It was a midfield player. So the coach asked if anyone would want to go in goal. So I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Because I used to like you know, playing in goal, diving around and all the mud and stuff when you were a kid. So I went in goal there and made a couple of good saves. Came out, got some good crosses, and we ended up winning the game three to zero. So I had a shutout, but that was the last time I, I played in goal. But I, I enjoy it. Just adds in that he got shut out even when he scored two goals as well. Um, he, he didn't mention the two goals he scored was on himself. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the number thing you brought up, and that's that's a really that's a big thing for um, US youth soccer right now. If you take coaching courses and things like that, they're doing the European style. And I remember when I used to, uh, when I was uh, back home in Scotland, obviously, um, you would walk into the locker room and whatever number you had above your locker was what position you played. So your manager, your head coach, never ever said, oh, by the way, Grant, you're playing right midfield today. You're playing forward. Whatever number you had, that's when you were playing. So if we go through it real quick, and feel free to add anything you want. Number one is obviously the goalkeeper. Uh, number two was right back. Number three was left back. Number four and five kind of could have varied a little bit, but four and five was normally your center halves. Uh, and number 11 was your, that's the one I used to get a lot, was a left winger, mm -hmm. left midfield. On the right was number seven, uh, right midfield, right wing. Right wing is kind of old school term of your really talented player that would run at people. Eight and six would be in the middle for the most part. Um, that that kind of varies too, but number eight would be center, definitely center midfield. Number six was a guy, and actually, ironically, that was my number, but number six was a guy you didn't want to mess with. You did not want to. As soon as you saw somebody had number six on your back, his whole goal was just to, just to make sure the really good players were protected. Um, and then obviously you got nine and ten up front. Ten's normally beh nowadays. Ten is behind the number nine. Uh, but it's it's it was it was really funny walking into the locker rooms and seeing 
if you were playing or not based on what number was on your locker? Yeah, we used to, you know, we used to have a team team meeting uh, before the games on a set. This is in England, going back when I played. You know, the games were at three o'clock in the afternoon, so we'd meet around about ten, ten thirty, eleven o'clock, and we'd have lunch. And then, you know, we'd sit down, and then the manager would name the team, and he would just go through the team. He'd say, number one, Jim Platt, number two, John Craig, number three, Frank Spragan, and uh, but and he just went through the full eleven, and he said, you know, number twelve, Alan Wally. And we get to the, the locker room, and you go into the locker room, and you have one through. 12. There was no names on the jerseys back then. You know, and I never had a name on my jersey until I came over here to play with the Minnesota Kicks. So, and then we saw numbers in the teens and then the 20s and 30s, which was strange. <laughs> but by, just about that time was when everyone else around the world started using numbers above 11 and 12 because, uh, like I said, when I played, there was only one sub. And yeah, you know, it was usually either a midfield player or a forward player. Very, very rarely was it, you know, I don't think ever was a goalkeeper. Um, I was, you know, or a defender. It was somebody that would that could change the game. Usually, a midfield player or a forward. That's why the stereotypical or the usual substitute goalkeeper then was a number thirteen, because yeah. the number twelve is normally, sorry, goalkeepers, a player that could, as you say, change the game. And and as we know, goalkeepers can change the game. Uh, the number thing is really funny since now, like, I've seen guys wearing number ninety nine. I've seen back in, I will say, 1998, there was a guy called Ivan Zamorano that played for Inter Milan, and they signed the Brazilian Ronaldo. And Zamorano was number nine. And obviously this Ronaldo, pro I think probably the best striker of all time, other than Alan Willey. <laughs> And my mom. Um, <laughs> no, she was good. She could put the ball away. She's a good football player. Um, so Ronaldo got the number nine off Zamorano. And then Zamorano got the number 18. But he put a plus sign in between the one and the eight. <laughs> so then he gets his nine. And he, was able, he was able to wear, wear that during the game? Yeah, yeah, wow. he had the plus sign. I remember it. I used to play him on FIFA all the time, and it was it was just hilarious seeing it. And he and he was a good striker in his own his own goal. And um, stadiums, though, that's something I really I wanted to kind of speak a, lo a little bit. Maybe not the best stadium you played in or I played in. More just what's the best atmosphere that you've been to a game in? And you can say NFL, you can say NHL, you can say a game that you were in the stands for. And Grant, you can jump in and. You can give your your input on that as well, or the coolest stadium. And I'm not a big, actually, I'm not big at all on baseball. It's not my style, but that twin stadium is unbelievable. Yep. Looking at it and the whole, the architecture and how it's been laid out, it's it's absolutely incredible. Best atmosphere that I ever went to was probably a Scottish Cup final which is a little bit different than your American sports because it's a little bit more violent and there's a low end when you're 9, 10, 11 years old. Uh, you get to see some stuff you maybe wouldn't at a Vikings game. But at Hamden Park, we had I had a brilliant atmosphere where it was just deafening and it, it was absolutely brilliant. So for you, a stadium that you visited and watched a sport in, Alan, and then Grant, you can... Uh, you can jump in for sure as well. Well, I think the, one of the, the best stadiums I played in, um, once you're on the field, is Old Trafford. You, you can't beat it. Um, but once you're in the locker room, you would, you would just think you're at some some dive, some third or fourth division team. The locker rooms were atrocious, especially for the visitors. This was a long time ago. But once you get on the field at Old Trafford and there's 75,000 people there, the atmosphere is incredible. But the best atmosphere I've ever was involved in was at Roker Park. Back when I was a kid, I'd go, we'd go to the games with my brother and we'd go in, you know, at the Fullwell end where they were singing. And back then, the goals, behind the both goals, it was standing room only. The only seats that were on the ground were on the, on the sidelines. But behind each goal, it was standing room only. And it was, uh, I think it was a quarterfinal of the FA Cup, the year they won it in 73. They were playing Manchester City. Mm -hmm. And they were beating them 3-0. Three, three to, three to zero. I think uh, Billy Hughes back then scored the third goal. And we just jumped up, and my brother had just had these false teeth in the front. And he got hit from behind, and his false teeth came out and got knocked on the ground. And he's trying to crawl on the ground. We are, you know, 50,000 people 
<laughs> around them. We we never did find them, but we're so happy that they won the game. But uh, yeah, that was that was the best atmosphere going to Roker Park, uh, watching Sunderland play that year. Uh, they weren't the best team in the world. They ended up winning it that season, and they they won some big games against some top teams. But the atmosphere in the in the stadiums then, you know, now they have seats behind the goals, so the the, the capacity has dropped down by you know a huge amount in some areas. But back then, you know, fifty, fifty five, sixty thousand, and you just have a wave of these people behind the goals. It was just incredible scenes. Yeah, stadiums, they're just brilliant. I went to see uh, T uh, C F Bank Stadium, which was a Vikings one, uh, which was absolutely unbelievable. It was just a good atmosphere. It's just a lot different than back home. Back home's a v- very, very hostile, uh, which is different. But uh, the family, the the U.S. environment with the families are absolute. It's it's beautiful stadiums, beautiful buildings, and very safe and clean. And I really like that. Well, so the, the atmosphere is a little different at some of the sporting events, especially you know you say the football, American football, and the baseball over here. A lot of people are just sitting there, mostly quiet until something happens during the action, but if you ever go to, to soccer games in England, it's from before the game even starts. And Scotland. Uh, well, and Scotland, yeah, if you, if you have to. But the the crowds are just singing back and forth, you know, for the whole 90 minutes, it's non-stop. And it's, you know, even if there's any lull in the action, that's when they're, they're normally singing. But the, the sporting events over here, sometimes you could fall asleep in some of the events. I agree. Unless there's any action going on. It's bad. And Yeah, and it's just crazy where you go to England and it's just constant singing and chanting at each other. And Scotland. Yeah, I keep forgetting about Scotland. I wonder why. <laughs> we, we won't give you any of the lyrics, but if you do have an internet, you can check on YouTube with some of the stuff that uh, we used to sing to Sunderland fans and back and forth. But Grant, what's your stadium of choice? Uh, well, I recently, uh, two weekends ago, right after Thanksgiving, went out to Seattle and went to the Seahawks football game out there against Pittsburgh Steelers. And when it comes to atmosphere, I've never experienced anything like that. I'm sure, like you guys said, soccer stadiums, it's from the beginning to the end, you know, before and after. But uh, it was like that. The only time it was quiet and every Seahawks fan knew it was when their team was on offense. Every single person didn't even talk to their neighbor. They talked to their neighbor in between plays and then would give it a couple talks, and then it would, you know, no more talking. You look over at the crowd, and they just scream to the top of their lungs. I've never been in such a loud atmosphere for football. So I'd have to say the Seahawks uh, stadium was that. And just uh, my favorite stadium to go to is Kauffman Stadium for baseball, actually. I love going down to Kansas City and the atmosphere down there, and they have a, it's just a fun, really wide, wide out, spread open stadium now that they're good it might be a little different because it's probably not so you know easy to walk around and move wherever you want but kansas city coffin stadium used to be my favorite place to go yeah the, the sounders also have a huge crowds when they play up at, in, the, in the seahawks stadium there and the atmosphere always looks great then at the same time you know singing chanting the whole way through and they get crowds in the sixty thousand range especially when they're playing uh, Portland. So yeah, I can just imagine what it would be like for a football game. There. Oh man, it was it was awesome. I didn't believe it. You know, the twelfth man out there. They say they gave it the twelfth man is the fans. And yep. I thought that was kind of you know. I mean, when you go to the Metrodome at back of the day with the Vikings, it was pretty loud in there, and you think, oh, this is this is loud football. But I was wrong. It was it was something else. Being an outdoor stadium like that and having those those fans have at it like they did. Well, I was just going to say one of the one of the loudest places I was ever in was the the old Met Center. Really, I remember that we were playing San Diego, and I think it was Game Six, um, and we're down on the bench, and the and was fifteen thousand eight hundred there, but you could not. Alan Merrick was the coach then, and you know we, there would be a timeout, and you'd call us over to talk to him, and we and we were just a matter of it, two two feet away, and we couldn't hear what he was saying because it was so so loud in the stadium. Then it was just incredible. I mean, you go in the locker room at half time, and your ears was just like ringing from from the noise that was out there. That's probably the loudest I've ever. I've ever been in any kind of stadium. So we get a little credit here. I like it. Uh, yeah, we do. It was. I mean, it was. Fu- it was fun back then. I wish if I had one game back in my career to play, that that would be the game we lost to San Diego. If we'd won that game, we would have won the championship in the MISL. Really? And we and we lost in, and we lost in game seven back in San Diego. But I'd like one game back would be that game. Where did they play in San Diego? Um, was it, it was it the sports arena? Yeah, indoors? it was a sports arena. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sports arena that complex there, right yep. by Rosecrans. Yep, yep, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, while we're on the NFL, and obviously we love every single sport, um, I don't watch a lot of NFL. I watch with my friends if they're watching it. I like I don't purposely sit down to watch. But I did see a guy for the Vikings when they're losing thirty-five zero, who 
celebrated his touchdown and made it very um very funny watching to be honest why would you do that why would you celebrate when you're losing 35-0 in the fourth quarter i'm thinking maybe bonuses maybe he gets extra money for i'll tell you why he never it's it's Cordell Patterson Alan you know yep, he yep. had a lot of hype behind him as a wide receiver when he came in he did do very well there in the beginning for a little bit as a receiver and he's completely fallen off the map as a receiver so the guy doesn't really get to celebrate much in that position I, I, I agree with you 100%. I don't like to see when a guy catches a ball and like stands up and screams out first down in front of the defender when you're down 35 nothing. Realize where the score is, where you're at. But right there, that was the one play I felt like in that whole game where the Vikings had a little bit of control. And he and the, and the announcers made the point to this on Fox because I was watching the game from home, and they said that was the most effort out of any Viking player all day. And, for, and they even said that, most people would be disgusted with him cheering at that moment, but go ahead, cheer on, bud. You deserve that. That was something that, for the rest of your team to look at you and just say, "Hey, let's 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 pretend that you know, let's not give up right now." So I, I see uh, what you're saying. I, see, my thing, I wasn't disgusted at all. It's just really humorous. If I was playing on the other team, I would absolutely batter him yeah. with comments, absolutely destroy him for it. And I've got it, you know. I was thinking about it, and I said, I've ever seen that before. And you see it all the time in NFL. Um, yeah. Maybe sometimes you see it in the NBA when somebody dunks when they're losing by 30 and then, like, flex, flexes the muscles. I don't know why you would do it, but I will bring up a little story of when I played in at Wisconsin-Milwaukee Division One, and it was a conference final to go to the NCAA tournament. So you got the two best teams in the league, in the Horizon League, and we were like we were a very good team. The other team was a good team as well. Uh, we were winning 8-0, which is unheard of in soccer, except for today when, ironically, Real Madrid beat Malmo 8-0. So like they, Real Madrid kind of messed up my my whole plan for saying this. Uh, but yeah, some uh, we were winning 8-0. Some guy from Cleveland State. I don't want to bring up his name because I just don't remember. <laughs> and yeah, uh, he was he was he was that good. And he scored a goal and he ran to the corner and celebrated like it was he won the World Cup for his country. And I could not believe it. The boys couldn't believe it. So we get back in the locker room, game ends eight one. We're celebrating, we're going to NCAA tournament. We got selection Monday where you go and see who you actually end up playing. And we all agree for the rest of our careers, and I had three years left, that um, we would copy this guy's celebration. And he did it like a bunny rabbit. Like he went down like on kind of like all fours and jumped to the corner. And in away game, and they had zero fans there. There might have been a couple of people's parents. We had like, we had we had a few thousand, but... For their team, he wasn't like going to like his corner and celebrating <laughs> with them, and we we're all looking like, "What the, you know, what's he doing?" So we continued to do it, and we continued to celebrate like that, uh, which was it, it. It it baffled me. It was unbelievable. It was hilarious. Uh, it was it was great. But that being said, Grant, do you have anything for and and I, I would like to thank Alive and Social and obviously Alan and Grant for having us. But what other um, podcasts can we listen to other than this amazing one? Well, if you want to hear a little bit more about the NFL, because obviously, you know, all three of us are NFL experts in here. But uh, now the NFL, they, there's this podcast called The Sports Ticket with Kevin Gorg and Kendall Mark. They're uh, on FSN North. They do a lot uh, with the, love, the wild in town here. But they have a podcast on our network called The Sports Ticket, and they broadcast on Wednesdays now, starting this Wednesday. Um, at uh, Dave and Buster's from 5 to 6, and then they go from, on Thursdays, from 6 to 7 at McGovern's in St. Paul. But it's, like I said, it's Kevin Gorgon, Kendall Mark. They're on FSN North. They do a lot with the Wild locally here, but this sports ticket covers anything from the Gophers, Twins, Wild, Vikings, anything locally and nationally that may be going on in sports. Yeah, Dave and Buster's, that's an, that's an unbelievable place. Yeah. Um, ladies out there listening, like I said, I don't have a date, but it's a great place to bring someone <laughs> at Craig underscore Malice. Uh, you got beer, you got food, you got games. Just 
realize I would not let you win. I'm just way too competitive, uh, <laughs> which is just, uh, and I've done it before. Trust me, you you don't you don't look like the best date in the world when you have someone with you and you're you're literally sweating as you're playing those games because you want to win so much. Uh, but no, thank you for that, Grant. It's uh, we're all NFL experts on here, as you know, which is great. Right. Alan, um, we had a great opening song. And this is the song, right? Currently, Alan is on a table, and he's loving it. And I might join him. It's a great song. So that was our opening one. We also had an unbelievable little song last week, or last Tuesday, or whatever day it was. I forget. Grant, I'm, I don't know if you can find it. Hello from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so... That was our unbelievable co-host, Hall of Famer, making a great song. Hello from the other side. Now, now I'm on the table. I know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, everyone else has left the room. There was eight people in here. Now they're all gone. But uh, no, that was a great one. I loved how you did the Adele thing. Um, it's not normally my style. My mom, Val Malice, she absolutely loves Adele and... I'd listened to it a little bit, but that song really got me. I, I loved that song. We also, um, I went back to the BBC and I was looking for music that I really, really liked. And there was a chart topper that we found recently that was, uh, it was in, I think it was like uh, 808 and the BBC that was done recently. What do you got? We hate Nottingham Forest. We hate Tottenham too. We hate Man United. But Sunderland, we love you. Sunderland! Sunderland! There it is. There it is, Alan. I thought it was good just to put it in. That's amazing. And as we both support pretty poor teams, I, but could, I, I both... just see myself in the in the full will end at, at Roker Park singing that. Roker Park, yeah. <laughs> this, we're beating Newcastle again and again and again. But that's what you want. I love that. Like me, I remember even when we first came to the US, and you know, me and my brothers were pretty homesick. And my mom and dad they drive to is a place called Lake Perrin, I think, which is pretty close. It's like south. Minnesota. Lake Pepin. Pepin. That's right. Pepin. Good man. Um, we would sit in the car and my mom and dad would be doing like a little antiquing or like doing that. And we would literally sit in the car and just sit, sing, sit and sit football songs <laughs> about Airdrie. And we were younger then. Like we weren't grown men. We don't do that anymore. Like we got out of that phase a few weeks ago. No, you, sing but, out, you sing outside <laughs> of the car yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we sing outside the car now. You can, you can do it as well. But... I, um, I saw that one. I wanted to bring it up. I thought it was brilliant. I just love the passion. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't anything in a bad way. It was just. I love that. And I think that was on. It was on a radio station that you did. And um, since we moved to, um, for Minnesota United, great ownership, very professional. And this is something that's not. I didn't have planned, but I was going to ask you. It must be. And our buddy Brad Baker brought up, it must be a little bit of a renaissance for you because you were an absolute legend for Minnesota. And I was half a legend. No, you you were a legend. But um, with all this exposure, with all this sort of thing, it must be kind of cool because, like, for, I'm guessing, 20, 30 years, you probably just went through your everyday life and nobody knew what you did or who you were unless you told them. But, you know, that's the way I liked it back then. You know, I, you know, uh, I was talking to Brad before and, you know, asking me to, to do this color commentary. All of a sudden, I'm going to be on live TV again. And I told him, like I tell everyone, as back when I played, the last thing I wanted to do was interviews. I was just, I, I didn't like to talk to people, especially after games. You come in the locker room and they're sticking the microphones in your face and stuff like that. And you come into a different country where, you know, the language or your the accent is totally different, like yours still is. Mine's a little bit. And it's just, you just you just feel out of place talking in an area where no one speaks the same. But back home, I was okay. But when you come over to a different different place, you, it sounds like you're speaking a different language and you kind of get embarrassed sometimes. And, and I tell people when, when I scored five goals against the Cosmos, 10 minutes ago in the Wait, game. Wait, how many? 
Well, that's got five goals against the Cosmos. We yeah, that's a sound bet. You can use that one for the rest of your life. If you ever single again, you can use that one. In August 14th, 1978, if I remember. Oh, wow. But, but uh, you know, I scored the fifth goal. And, that wasn't and, born. And, and it, went, it went back to, into my mind. I was thinking was, oh, I've got to do all these interviews. All these cameras are going to be there. And, and I'm starting thinking about interviews with 10 minutes left in the game because I've scored five goals. I go, oh. You know, why did I do this, basically? But uh, Please, God, take me now. <laughs> but th that's the kind of thing I was thinking about was I've got to go and talk to people. I'm going to have to do television interviews. I've got to do radio interviews. And that's the kind of stuff that I, I didn't like doing back then. You know, but um, as, as, as you get older, you get a little bit more mature and stuff like that. Now, now it doesn't bother me at all. Can I use your resume then so I can... I can Feel free. If, if you're not doing it, yeah, can I just do it? <laughs> Uh, it was, you know, obviously it's a great, a great resume. But like you I said, but, you know, just to go on from what you were saying, you know, you know, when I played here, and I, I love all the Minnesota teams. You know, any team that's playing in Minnesota, you know, I'm, I, I'm a homer. And, and as soon as I, when I watched the Thunder when they were playing, I went and watched some of the games when Minnesota United. How did I play? Game, um, to be honest, I didn't. I don't remember you playing. Sweet, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. But uh, I, you know, Minnesota United started playing. I'm saving that one. <laughs> I, I went. Okay, you can delete that one, Grant. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, that sweet computer is going out the window. <laughs> but I, but I'd go to, I'd go to the games. I'd watch the games. I watch the games on TV. I'd be having on a Saturday night when they were playing. If the weather wasn't that great, I'd have pitcher and pitcher. I'd have the Wild on one side, and I have you know Minnesota and and Chris Litholm was on the other side. Now just to watch those games. And then when they asked me to do the, the pregame show, and then finally they asked me to do the, uh, the color commentary, you know, it was, I get to watch, you know, from the best seat in the house basically now. You know, I get in to watch the games. My wife and kids come up and watch the games. So, you know, I, I'm pulling for them. And it's just, it's like we're back in the big time now, which is, which is huge. Not that we were ever big with the kicks. I mean, the crowds were big, um, you know. And we, we, you know, we did, we did a lot of things in the community, but the Minnesota United are even better than what Minnesota, you know, kicks wherever were, because they they're, they do everything around town. And to be honest, it's one of the nicest organizations I've ever been around. No, the organization is brilliant. I love working for them. Um, it's deep to my heart knowing that I never played for Minnesota United, but um, like yourself, I've represented the state of Minnesota as a professional player, which fills me with huge pride. Um, I just wish they've got the MLS team six or seven years ago when I was playing uh, and and the ownership group and uh, the whole front office which we absolutely love um, it's funny you brought up that you were thinking 10 minutes before a game or before the end of the game what your interview would be or what you were doing that recently my dad had his 60th birthday and my brother plays from Montreal Impact and I was obviously going to his birthday. My mom did a surprise birthday party. I, they live in Minnesota. I was there. Uh, my younger brother, or my my middle brother, Scott, who lives in L.A., he came to it, and he stayed with me the night before. And Callum, who plays in the MLS, he had a game that day, and it was on a Saturday, and there's no way he's coming, and he always tells me everything, I love him. He's unbelievable. But he never, uh, we didn't know. So there's me making a speech for my dad with my uh, my middle brother in front of all these people, and we're missing Callum. And I won't forget it because I watched the game, his game earlier that day. I think his game was at like 2 p.m. Or, uh, sorry, 3 p.m., but it was 2 p.m. Eastern time. And as soon as the game was done, he bolted down the tunnel like sprinted and I should have thought about it then but I was watching I was like you didn't shake hands you didn't he must have some bowel problems and you know what that's like Alan, probably when you play wouldn't be the first one yeah 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 I've seen yeah uh there's we've, we've all seen we've all been with guys who have that guys I played with they couldn't they they would hear the team talk as they were in the restroom because they were just nervous and those issues but I literally see him sprint past everyone, and it, it never clicked. And then as I was giving my speech, as soon as I got done, he had flown back from Montreal, Canada, went through customs, 
and was at the house right behind me at the party. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. It was literally, uh, I'd say, f as soon as the game was done, I would say maybe four hours. That's all it took for him to get there. It was unbelievable. And there's me, and the first thing I ask him, because I'm in, I give him a, a hug, I give him a hug, give him a kiss. Um, I've missed him. I think I said the dumbest thing of all time. I asked him about his bowels. <laughs> I'm like, why are we sprinting off? I'm like, it's the fastest you've run in a while. And then he brought up, obviously, that I was the slowest professional player of all time. <laughs> um, but no, he was. it was amazing that he could come. I just thought that was a funny story. And, and that's what we try and bring to everyone is me and Alan's experiences and the people we know, the funny, the funny stories out there. And that, that was an unbelievable one. Um, I think now it might be time to get into last week's predictions. Grant, what do you think? Yeah, we can do that. Do you yeah. have it? I do. I have last week's predictions right here. Um, I have off the top of my head. I don't think me or Alan did well at all. I think we messed up on quite a few. There were some crazy results last week. It was, it was yeah. just everything went against form last yeah. week. It wasn't even close. Yeah, it wasn't nothing to do with ability or form. It was just straight up. Um, Especially goals. the Newcastle Liverpool game. That was. What was the score of that one? That was two zero. I just can't believe. The goalkeeper only had to do was pick the ball at the net twice. But yeah, two 0 to her. Yeah, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Set in the mood. Yeah. Right now, Craig said Man City would win three to one, and Alan said Man City would win one zero. What was the score? I don't have the actual score. Two zero. Stoke. Two zero. Yeah. Okay. So that means zero points. Zero Zeros. points. Yeah. That's going to be a common theme, people. And then, and remember, please, at home, keep, keep track as well yourself. Do this on your own. Um, and then comment on the, the Alive and Social Facebook and the Twitter and me and Alan's Twitter. And then Grant, I don't know if you have one, but you can always throw it out there if you want. Yeah, it's gwangstern, er, at gwangstern is my Twitter handle. But next game is the Arsenal game. What was the score of that game, guys? 3-1 to one, Arsenal. 3-1 to one, Arsenal. Craig had a 3-0 Arsenal. And oh. Alan had it 2-0 Arsenal. So 1-1 one, one each. Each point, each. point each. Next one we had uh, Watford. And Alan had Watford 2-1. And you had a tie, actually, Craig, 1-1. One one. What was the score of that game? Watford 2-0. Ooh. So we get one point for Alan over here and zero for Craig. Thanks, Grant. Sorry, buddy. We got uh, Leicester City as the next game, and both of you picked 2-1 to one Leicester City. What was the score of that game, guys? Uh, it was 3 now. 3 nothing. yeah. 3 nothing. so you each get one point there. And then we have the uh, Southampton game, and 2-0 Craig, 3-0 Allen, and you both picked Southampton. What was the final score? 1-1 one, one one, tie. 1-1 one, one tie, so 0 there for, for you guys. Uh, we go down to the Man U game, and Craig, you had Man U 2-1. And Alan, you had Man U 2 0. 0 0 tie. 0 0 tie. Wow, again. I hope no one woke up for that one. Oh, that would be a boring game. And then we've got the next one. And help me, gentlemen, with pronouncing this team, please. Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur. All right. Uh, Craig, you had Tottenham 2 0. And Alan, you had 3 1. What was the final score? 1 1. 1 1 tie. Zeros again. I can't believe no one, none of us have lied when he's asking the score. <laughs> you good? Definitely. I know. I know. I'm, uh, I'll have the finals next time to make this a little I'm more. I'm for the Newcastle score to come up. And there I'll tell we him. go. We got Chelsea. We had Craig pick Chelsea three to zero, and Allen Chelsea two to one. What was the score of that game, gentlemen? Zero one Bournemouth. Ooh, again zeros. No one saw that one coming. That no. was that, that. That's the biggest surprise. That's almost as surprising as Man City. One Liverpool four. And, you know, Sunderland get to play Chelsea in a couple of weeks. Just can't get here close enough. Really? So, uh, <laughs> Someone's excited. <laughs> yeah. right. not, they're not playing very well, so it's a good time to play them. Nice. Now we have Liverpool, and both you guys picked Liverpool to win. Alan, you had three zero. Craig, two one. What was the score of the Liverpool game, guys? One zero to Liverpool. All right. So you each get a point there. And two zero Liverpool. Was it? Oh, two, on, two zero Newcastle. Am I on the wrong one? Oh no 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 no. I just wanted to make you say that. <laughs> Can I get a round of applause? It was two castle. It was, oh, I go oh, round of applause. Here we go. Two, it was two zero to Newcastle. The, and one of the shots is wasn't even on goal. It was deflection. It was an own goal. Second goal was when Liverpool were pushing forward. Ref, well, the linesman called offside. 
which would have made it 1-1, and Liverpool would have gone and walked that game. So everything was against Liverpool. Win, a win's a win. Yeah. Um, I predicted Liverpool would win, so I'm sorry for my friends and family back home. I did predict it, but um, we'll take the win, and uh, Alan owes me a beer next door. Well, well, speak, after this. Speaking of Liverpool, I just heard on the way in that Daniel, Daniel Sturridge is out injured again with a hamstring yeah. injury, which is, which is sad news. It's not looking good for this guy uh, with the injuries he's getting in the prime of his career. Um, obviously, it's the injuries had with his with his knee has kind of started niggling his hamstring, and it's, you get those kind of things when you're trying to overcompensate on something that has been injured, and you end up hurting your hamstring. But that's not good news for Liverpool. Yeah, they're just players like that. You just literally wrap him in cotton wool. But then even when you do, he's still going to get injured. It's, it's it's sad. It's a shame because he's a good talent. But that's just he's that's just the way his body is. And there's been much better players in the world. Who have not played at his level, based on injuries as well. But we've seen I, him early in the week against Southampton in the in the League Cup. Uh, was it semi final or quarter final? He scored no, two goals. He scored two goals, and he you know and he hardly broke a sweat. And he had mm. he hadn't played in a long no, time. No. He comes out and scores two no. goals, and he gets it's, hamstring injury, which is a shame. Sad. And going on to the last game, Monday night's game, you had Everton versus uh, what was it, uh, Crystal Palace, right? Yep. And they tied. 1-1. One one. One. Yep. Both you two had Everton winning 2-1. So zeros again. That leaves the final score of three points to Allen and two points to Craig. It was a close one. 3-2 victory goes to Allen. It was better than 9-2 the week before. I, I try to keep it a little closer this week just because it seems that the mo- most you get is two points. So I'm trying my hardest to keep just getting three. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing well. I'm not proud of it. I'm going to blame it on the management. I'm going to blame it on the coaching. I'm going to blame it on the players. I'm going to blame it on pretty much everything except for myself. But just last week, the, the fixtures just went. Everything went against form. It was the, the whole season's been like this. It's, it's crazy. You know, yeah. you got Leicester sitting top of the, the Premiership, and who would have thought that? You know, early in early in the season. Good for them. Yeah. Um, do a little miscellaneous, um, Alan. If you want to talk about anything that's non soccer related, maybe I can. Uh, we're going to call this little segment Grant time. I don't know if he's got any music or... Uh, I don't really have any music for it, but... So, Grant, uh, but, but, uh, before we get on, Grant time is basically injury time. So, injury time and... Very... Alan's back on the table. Alan is. Uh, Grant, Grant time is basically injury time, which in soccer means when players waste time or they get injured or they're rolling around and take the ball to the corner... That's uh, the minutes they add on mm-hmm. at the end of the game. So it's called injury time. We don't have injury time because me and Alan have not been in a fight yet regarding Newcastle Sunderland, so there's no injuries confirmed. But we're going to call it grant time. Alan, you can jump in and say, talk about anything you want that's funny, that's not funny, that's serious. Do what you want. Go well, ahead, Grant. All right. I'm going to ask you guys two questions. One, First, gonna, one is going to involve soccer, and the other one's going to involve a sport that's completely off the map from this podcast. First, I watched a little bit of the Monday night, or not Monday night, it was more Monday afternoon, Everton Crystal Palace game, and I talked to you guys a little bit about this guy beforehand. Forgive me, but uh, Romano Lukaku. Lukaku exactly. Yeah, good right? one. Yep. Right? Romano Lukaku, he had one heck of a game, and he is just a beast out there from what I could tell. And, I mean, you were telling me he's 22 years old, right? Yep. Craig, 22 years old, and I guess I just, from from the perspective of a kid that doesn't watch a lot of soccer, and I just, I've been, since joining this podcast with you guys, I've been expanding my horizons a little bit and watching here and there and, and trying to get a little more versed in it. I really enjoyed watching this guy play. He had, at one point in time, four or five defender, or different defenders, players around him, and lost the ball for a second, got it back, still made the shot off, barely missed it from getting in goal. And stuff like that where there's just pure dominance from that kind of level. I love watching that kind of stuff. And it really gave me like a feeling of a LeBron James kind of aspect when watching him play basketball amongst a lot of the other guys. He just seemed so much bigger and faster than everybody else. Well, you know where he came from? He, he was a Chelsea player. Really? And he'd been on loan to, for Everton a couple of seasons. And finally Everton, well, I don't know how they managed to, to buy him, but um, I'm sure... 26 million, I think. Yeah, but I'm sure Chelsea would lo- love to have him at the moment because, I mean, he's, he, for, you know, he was 20 when he was there and he was in and out of the team. But 20 year old, I mean, 
it's rare you get into the team when they're that young. Just uh, to go back when I when I played, I I, st- I played my career first game was at seventeen. What were you what, what were you guys doing at seventeen? <laughs> <laughs> not, Just, not yeah, not that. No, but it, that, that was rare. at the time I was the youngest player to play at seventeen years of age back then. But you know uh, now it, it seems to be a little longer and longer because it's you know obviously the league has, has gotten better and better, but. Um, I'm, I was so surprised Chelsea would let this guy go because I, I did see him play for Chelsea a few times, and he was good, but he wasn't consistent. And it, well, he wasn't consistent because he was a you know nineteen twenty year old back then. Mm-hmm. Now he said he's what twenty twenty one twenty two, and he's yeah. just an incredible player. I, I, like you say, I love to see him play too. It's, you know, not when he's playing against Sunderland, but uh, I love watching him play because he's strong on the ball. He's good in the air. And, and I think he's, he might have scored the goal, the tying goal. He that, did. That, that, yeah. But he's, he's a goal scorer. But Chelsea would love to have him right now. When you say loan, I know this is just a stupid question, but how do you loan a player? Well, Chelsea, let's, Chelsea's a prime example. They have probably 50 players on their, on their books, professional players. You only allow 25 p- uh, players on a squad, so you have to put this sheet forward at the beginning of the season of 25 names that you're going to have on your squad. Active roster. Active roster. So the other 25, they send and, – and more, out of these 25 players, let's say it's 25 or 15 or whatever number it is that's out on loan, they're, they're usually younger players. They're not, they're not older, experienced players. Developing. They're, they're, they've got them. They've, they've, got the, they've bought them from your, uh, teams that, you know, they paid money for them, and they've sent them out on loan to get experience. So they're, they're, they're gaining experience playing for – Lesser teams, but at least they're getting experience. They need to play. They need to play. They need to play. You can't have, you, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you know. But now they don't have reserve teams per se. When when I played, we used to have a reserve team. So you had the league where you, we, if you weren't in the first team, you were always playing in the reserves at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Now they don't have that that league anymore. So, uh, they, so have, they don't have a minor league system. No, they don't. And that the, the minor league system to Chelsea is the rest of the teams in, in the other leagues. Oh, wow. So they just you know they have a bunch of they have but, more players out they, there. They have they have boys they have men on their team who are eighteen, nineteen, twenty, who they bought for several million, yeah. who are not on it. So it's not like you put them in the minor league. Like these people play for their international country. Yeah, but they're not but they're not Chelsea. good enough to make the top twenty five. And they're making and there's I know for a fact there's a few ones that make forty thousand pounds, just sixty thousand dollars a week. week. What? A week. Yeah. And they're not anywhere near the top forty. Oh wow. Yeah. And they're gone out. So That's a dream. But it was funny that you brought up what I was doing at seventeen. My mum has been listening. So I'm going to say no comment. <laughs> You're doing a paper yeah. round. Sorry, mom. Yeah, yeah, I, w- I was doing a paper round, and I was studying a ton. I promise you that. So <laughs> All the time. But, yeah, no, that was, uh, that was our grant time. Do you have anything else? Have one more thing, guys. You golf at all? We're both golfers. You're a big golfer. I was going to bring that up. Uh, there's some courses were open today. I, Southern Hills was open. I looked at the website today. Yep. They had a couple of Santa Clauses jumping in the air saying Christmas is here early. They were playing. That's a side job. Pioneer Creek out my way, neck of the woods. I actually used to own Lakeview Golf Course and Red Oak Golf Course out in the west suburb. We sold them in 2013 for development. It was a family business, third mm-hmm. generation. So golf is my soccer to you guys. I love it. And the fact that I can see people golfing on December 8th, I think it is today. Yeah, yeah December 8th. That is sweet for the business, sweet for the industry. And I love that you got excited about it. I'm just happy for all my fellow golf, former golf course owner friends that can Try to bring in some money right now at the time when they wouldn't be otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. So, are you telling us me and Alec can golf for free if we go with you? Yeah, we can. Get, I get you on some courses. So yeah. it's going to be. There we go. The, the Scottish English tightness right there. There we go. So, yeah. It's supposed to be thirty nine, forty degrees at the weekend, and I'll play in that. We're playing in colder than that. Yeah. Might be a little bit of rain, which is no problem. But I'm hoping they're going to be open at the weekend because uh, me and my buddies will play for sure. What's your, what's 40, your... 44 tomorrow, I think. Right. Yeah, warm. What's your course? Um, we we play different courses. We're, mostly we play at River Oaks down in Cottage Grove. Yep. Uh, a lot of times we play at Southern Hills, but uh, towards the end of the season, I say the last two months we play at River Oaks because when when we play there, it's mostly pine trees, so there's no leaves falling and you're losing your ball when it, if you don't hit the fairway. But uh, it, with all the pine trees there, it's it's a lot better than having to look for your ball sometimes. I agree. We were uh, we were always known as one of the first courses to open, and we never had leaves. We were the best at keeping our leaves. Lakeview Golf Course. If anybody's listening, that used to look, go to Lakeview Golf Course. That's yeah. my logo right there. Okay. Lakeview and Red Oak Golf Course. Good old memories out there. So that's um, that's all I have for. Uh, for uh, my bit of my segment right here. Other than that, it should be, uh, you know, 
it was pretty good. Thanks for having me do that. I like that. That was fun. Yeah, we'll we a, do it. We'll, we do, have... we'll do it every week, and we'll we'll see what you got. Hopefully, you can. Entertain, I'll spice it up. Entertain yeah. us and make us make me and Alan look better. And maybe I'll and... do a game show next time for you guys. Something fun like that. We'll 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 spice it up each week. But we have about ten minutes left of the hour here. Craig, I know there's a few things you wanted to still get to. Alan, what do you guys have in store? We definitely have to do new predictions because I'm sick of losing and it's not my strong suit. I'm not a very good loser. Um, and I know a lot of people always say I'm a bad loser. I've never met a good loser. So, True competitor. Uh, yeah. tr- well, you're going to win one eventually. I know, I know. I'm... Otherwise, I'm going to start cheating, and uh, we don't advocate cheating on this show. But uh, I'm, I'm going to have to. I just, I just. Uh, if you don't winning, cheat, you're not trying. Winning, yeah, exactly. If you, yeah, exactly. if you don't cheat, you're not trying hard enough, and um, it's just, just a thing of mine. So we do predictions, music suggestions is another one I want to hear from the people that are listening, and you know our Twitter handles. Uh, handles you got mine, you got Alan's, you got Grant's. Let us know what you want to listen to. It doesn't always have to be the best song in the world or something you think me and Alan want to listen to. If you want to do something funny, do it. It's not that. Anything. Man, this table's taking a beating tonight. Yeah, Alan, get down. Keep keep your shirt on, buddy. Keep your shirt on. We should probably tweet that out. Uh, (laughs) But yeah, and then for the uh, even for the predictions, let's, let's pull up a song and let's do a funny song or a good song or whatever you like grant and let's do you know in the background of predictions let's let's get a song going let's all get right, people right. to do it and people comment let us know tell us if it's awful tell us if it's brilliant right um tell me if i should cheat to try and beat alan this week because i got no problem doing that i can you know i'm the one that types them all up i can definitely manufacture. you can doctor it yeah i can doctor yeah. it for you yeah i'm fi- i'm i'm fine with that like there's let, a let there's me just a, write this down there's, you know? yeah there's a there's a no <laughs> exactly look at alan yeah there's a there's a pub next door i'll buy you a beer if you want to do it <laughs> all right well we're gonna keep the same song that we had for the last bit of predictions and i'm gonna make something different for next week but we're gonna... all right who's gonna get the games up here i'm gonna be writing them down you're gonna be you're gonna go Right, right, lay them out, Craig. Yep, I can lay them out. Um, right. About the music part, though, if I have audio of me doing karaoke, oh, that's can good. we use that? Absolutely. Okay. Anything of you singing, we that uh, yeah, it's okay. when we go more than thirty seconds of an actual copyrighted song. Technically, we can't do that, so I try to cut it off within thirty seconds, unless I mess with it like I did this one, where it's just looped the same five okay. seconds. No, that works for me because I got I got some brilliant karaoke ones. Alan, are you a karaoke guy? No, but that's one thing I won't get on the table for is your karaoke <laughs> oh, you, oh, okay. <laughs> you You will when you hear it. You will when you hear it. It's, uh, it'll be music to your ears, literally. And figuratively. I don't know what the difference is between literal and figurative, so I just use both. But it will be music to your ears. So for the games this week, um, try, um, pulled it up. We have Norwich against Everton, I believe, on December 12th. I'm going to say 3-1 to Everton. I'll go 2-1 to one Everton, and at least Lukaku gets one goal. Now, oh. now I'm going to pick the goal scorers. <laughs> now, yeah, now you get double, you get double points for that. Uh, next one would be West Ham against Stoke. That's a difficult one. It's going to be a hugely boring one. So I suggest you come and do karaoke with me rather than watch that game. And I would say for that one, I'm going to go on a limb and kind of put a risk out. And I'm going to say 2 2. I'll go West Ham 1, Stoke 2. Stoke are, uh, Stoke are a good road team. So I, I fancy they might pull it out here. They beat Manchester City last week 2 0 at home. So. But they were until they played Sunderland a couple of weeks ago. They'd won four or five in a row on the road, but obviously with the sending off, Sunderland played against ten men. They turned them over, which was nice. That's actually not a bad bet, to be honest. Um, that's a, that might be the winning score, uh, to be fair. Uh, next game, we got two absolutely shocking teams. Uh, we got Sunderland against Watford. Again, don't wake up for this one. Don't set your alarm. Don't kick your. Uh, your partner out the room to watch this one. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say one one. 
<laughs> you couldn't you couldn't just say someone were gonna win, could you? You just no. couldn't, you couldn't say it. <laughs> one one. I can't do it. My granda who's still alive would absolutely destroy me. He's like he's like eight he's four, eight, five, eight, six, and he would batter me if I said that. Two um, two zero Sunland for me. Yeah. Book it. Man City Swansea. Swansea's just having a nightmare right now. Gary Monk, who I met um, a couple of years ago when we hosted Swansea City, uh, he's a brilliant. I think he's a brilliant coach. He's a good man. He's a nice man. Um, it looks like he's probably fallen out with the owner and the pretty badly. Brendan Hugh Rogers, Jenkins. Brendan Rogers could be going. He back might there. go that's, back. That's the word, you know. That's what I see. Um, I'm going to say only because Man City's at home. I would say three 0 Man City. I'll go two two zero Man City. Crystal Palace against Southampton. Uh, Southampton have to come good soon because I think they have the quality and I think they have a good manager. They're just not there right now. So I'm going to say 2-1 to Palace. Crystal Palace, huh? I go, I'm going to go 1-1 one, one here. Crystal Palace are starting to play well again. Um, they got a, a good tie against Everton and um, Southampton are a very similar team to Everton. I think 1-1. Uh, one, one. Bournemouth, Man United. Not going to be a brilliant game. 2-0 Man United. Well, the surprise there is if United score two goals. They're, they're, they're really struggling. I watched them today. They're, they scored two today, though. They, they scored two today, but and they, they could have had six, but... But by even to get all those chances, we're giving out a lot, lot of chances too. And Bournemouth's a tough place to play. Bournemouth, I is think it, Bournemouth might turn them over. I, I'm going to say Bournemouth two to one. Ooh, that, oh, see, right there. That's that. That's a game changer right there. If Man United win, I win the week. What, Otherwise, what, what was your score? You said two zero, right? Two zero. Two zero. Man United. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure if Rooney's going to be back or not. I'm not sure if you even want him back. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aston Villa Arsenal 3-1 Arsenal I would say 3-0 Arsenal Liverpool West Brom um, I'm sure Liverpool boys they'll have a rocket up there you know what because uh, they're probably still crying and depressed and in clinics after Newcastle completely outplayed them completely outclassed them what, what game were you watching? <laughs> I was watching the Newcastle game. <laughs> Completely outplayed them? Oh, outclassed them. Uh, outclassed them. It was, men, it was men against boys. But oh. if you want to talk about that game... No, 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 no. no we're no, good. No, we're good. I, I think Klopp got it wrong that day. He's, he's got to play his best team. He's got, he's got to put Lallana in the lineup. He's got to put Sturridge in the lineup. They, they go, these guys have got to play. He, he, he can't pick... If they want to win the title... They've got to play these games, and if they play, you saw how well they played against Southampton when they won. They scored six against Southampton, but when you got, uh, is it uh, Ibe? Ibe? Ibe. Yeah. Ibe and uh, Origi was on the bench, but you can't have Ibe being your main striker when you're going away to Newcastle and expect to win games. You got to have Sturridge up there. Oh, I think Benteke ben was on, but he, he wasn't really involved in the game much. But Le uh, Liverpool yeah. have a chance for the title. Based on how we outclassed them, I think Newcastle's got a fair shout to win the league. So we'll move on right from that oh, one. Wait, what was the prediction? Oh, no, there? prediction, sorry. Um, I will say three, uh, three one to Liverpool. I'm going to go Liverpool 2 0. Spurs against Newcastle. Uh, Normally, I'd say Tottenham will win. Tottenham's a much better team. They're a much better coach team. Newcastle, over the last four or five years, have called this place, instead of the stadium's called White Hart Lane, we call it Three Point Lane. Yeah. Because we always we always win there for some reason. And I remember scoring, we scored a goal 10 seconds into the second half. It was a long ball. It's always been called Three Point Lane. I just don't believe in us. We can do it two weeks in a row. Liverpool and Tottenham are two quality teams, better than us. I would say um, 2-0 Tottenham. Wow, I put you down for Newcastle. Uh, yeah, I've got How does a, that feel? It's gonna you, be, you put Allen down for Newcastle? We're, That's we're, fine. We're, <laughs> we're, we're going to rename it to No Point Lane because, like I say, Spurs are going to win 2-0. Same three, score. Three, same, yeah, same score. Last one, 
this one is really interesting to me. I cannot wait for this game. It's on Monday. I'm going to have to tape it because I'll be at work. Leicester, Chelsea. This one, if Chelsea lose again, Mourinho might be gone. And Leicester are good enough to beat them. Especially at Leicester. And they're, and they're, they're top of the league. And it's one of the best atmospheres. But they're, not, they're top of the league not after a couple of games. You know, a couple of games in a season you see a team. This, at, is, this is week 16. Yeah. So it's, it's he's halfway, doing something right. Yeah. Halfway through the season, they're top of the league. If they keep winning, I'm not going to predict anything, uh, which is ironic since we're doing predictions right now. But that that's a crazy one. I'm going to say 2-1 Leicester. I'm going to go 3-1 Leicester. I just think... We Chelsea hate. are looking so slow at the moment, and you can see how on a high Leicester are, and they, they're a quick team anyway. I think Leicester will just destroy Chelsea, especially the back four, they the old guys back there. So, you know, with uh, Vardy and Mahrez, we talked a couple of weeks ago, you asked me if I if would pay to see anybody, and Mahrez would be one of them. And he scored a hat trick last week against Swansea, and it uh, wouldn't surprise me if he notches another couple this week too against Chelsea. Not only do they look slow, there's just no fight. That's what I never get, obviously, and we keep, we'll keep. always bring up when we played. When I played, I wasn't fast. I was slow. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, it's well, it's well aware, but you'd, you wouldn't want to fight me. Trust me. And I was, you would fight regardless if you were playing against somebody who was bigger, stronger, faster, more talented. You would put up a fight, and you'd give it back, and you'd make sure that person knew they were in a game, even so... They could win, and that's what's really weird to me, especially a Mourinho type of team. There just don't, just seems no fight in them right now, and like you say, I, I'm not sure if, if he'll get get fired, but uh, I know for a fact that they can't wait for January first to get here soon enough, because he's going to be having to buy all kinds of people um, to try and fix what's going on here, because the they're the, the closer to the bottom than they are to the top, and. Um, the way they're going right now, Sunderland play them in a couple of weeks, and, and I can't wait till we get there because the way Chelsea are playing, I fancy Sunderland might be able to turn them over too. Well, those are the predictions. Let us know what your ones were. Um, Grant, thank you. You're welcome, guys. Alan, thank you. No problem. Uh, this is Soccer with a Kick. Always have a great time. Tuesday is my favorite day of the week based on this. The song is killing. If I could show you what Alan is doing right now. It would be brilliant. I'm going <laughs> to copy those moves so I can uh, find a female uh, female friend. Uh, this is Soccer with a Kick. You know the Twitter handles. Please follow us. Please ask questions. Give us your requests. It, from me, from Grant, from Alan, thank you very much. We love you. Um, enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you. Hello from the other side, hello from the other side.